Isaiah says, though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Now all of us, we know what it's like to eat the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. We all have our trials. And we also, in the spiritual life, we have our times of desolation and dryness. This is normative in the spiritual life. Amen? Amen. But also, consolation and sweetness and delight, that's also meant to be normative in the spiritual life. Now, there are some people, they just assume they're supposed to be permanently stuck in dryness. Have you ever met someone like that? It's like, oh, I never experienced God. I've been in a dark night since the day I was born. Nothing but aridity and dryness and desolation. I don't feel anything when I pray, you know. Now again, there might be some people who have a very exceptional calling to experience nothing but dryness their whole life. But I think they might be doing something wrong, okay? Now, again, in Isaiah, it goes on. The Lord promises consolation. And I think part of the interpretation, I think part of it is it's pointing to heaven, the fulfillment of all desire. But the Lord goes on to say after this, speaking about adversity and affliction, he says, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. But your eyes shall see your teacher. And it goes on. He will give you rain and grain. Your cattle will graze in broad pastures. Every lofty mountain, every high hill, there will be brooks running with water. The light of the moon uh, will be light, uh, the light of the sun. And again, I, I think part of this is pointing to the grace of consolation and delight and, and sweetness uh, that the Lord wants us to experience at least sometimes. Now, I want to share with you, I'm a bit of a spiritual eccentric and proud of it, you know. Now, you may know I have a little camper in the woods, a little camper. It's so small, I counted how many paces. I'm, I'm a pacer. I'm a restless person. I like to pace. And when it gets dark at 5 p.m. and it's freezing cold and maybe raining and you don't have a TV, you can go nuts, but I don't go nuts. Why? Because I'm a bit of a spiritual eccentric, okay? I know I can walk seven paces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and what I love to do is I get a piece of paper and I write down, um, let's see if any of you are good with riddles. I write down one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then I write next to the numbers J, 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 L, 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 S, 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 G, 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 does anyone, is, what is it? What, 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 what am I writing? No. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. J, 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 J. Does anyone catch it? Yeah, the rosary. One, two, three, four, five, joyful, 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 joyful. Luminous, 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 luminous. Sorrowful, sorrowful, sorrowful. And then what I do, I pray the rosary, but I like to alternate. I call myself a puttering pustinic. I like to alternate. So what I do is I write next to one J, wash the dishes. So I'll pray a decade of the rosary, sometimes pacing, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'll use the grace from that decade to wash the dishes in the presence of God. Then I'll pray another decade, two J, I'll write, you know, um, tidy cupboard. I'll pray the decade, get the grace, and then tidy the cupboard. Now, the reason I mention this is, in, okay, and this gives me joy, spiritual grace, consolation, but I added something to my little eccentric routine. Now what I do is I write the task, and then I write a little refrain. I have a, a little card with all my favorite song refrains. There's like 40 or 50 of them, you know, like some, sing praises all you people, or the spirit of the Lord has come, or, or let your glory, like I have, the, I, I love those songs. So what I do, pray the decade, do the dishes, and while I'm doing the dishes, I praise the Lord. And again, the grace, the consolation, because I, I, don't, I find I don't praise the Lord enough, and God is constantly calling us to praise Him, so we need to find practical ways of doing this. And in the psalm it says, how good it is to sing praises to our God. 
The scriptures constantly calls us to praise the Lord, but we don't praise the Lord enough. And it goes on to say, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. So again, the person who, I experience nothing but desolation and dryness. My question is, are you praising the Lord? Like, what are you doing about it? Because Scripture also says, draw close to God, and He will draw close to you. And so the Lord, He, yes, there will be times of desolation, darkness, dryness, of course. That's par for the course. But the Lord wants to pour out His delights, His presence, His consolation, His sweetness, and He does generously. But you got to be willing to be a bit of a fool to receive the power and the anointing and the presence in the, uh, and the glory of God in your life.